All kinds of abstract images can be created in Affinity Designer and you can create them very easily. This is how. Go to the Freehand Selection tool. With the Freehand Selection tool, set the feather to something like 170, quite large, and create a very abstract, just any kind of shape, doesn't particularly matter, just going to randomly do a few squiggles and then release. And you've got that. What you need to do then, create a layer. To add a gradient or anything, you need a layer. So layer, a new layer. Then I'm just going to go to the gradient tool. I'm going to apply a gradient. And you can see a gradient straight away. You get this lovely blurry effect. You create some very interesting smudges and oddball designs just by doing that. But you'll notice another thing that happens, which is very odd, is that when you apply it, you can apply it multiple times, but there's a legacy. Something when you apply a gradient normally, the previous gradient goes. But this time, what you can do, just go here to swatches and you can add all kinds of colours, but you've still got the legacy of the previous one added. So you can see there. And you can do that, of course, multiple times and you can see this ghostly effect. Very odd. And I'm just going to go with the gradient, something like that. But you've got this lovely smudge design. But what you can then do is you can deform it. Now, I'm not going to have the selection anymore, so select and deselect. So that's removed. I'm not going to have the swatches, so remove that. And it's just a pixel layer. Just got here, pixel layer. You can resize it, move it around. And you can deform it. You can distort it in other ways. But I'm just going to go with filter and distort and deform. Here's the panel here. And I'm just going to go with rigid. You could use similar as well, similarity. But I'm just going to add it around the edge. And you can see the edge there. It's got a unusual contours. And I'm just going to add lots and lots of points all the way around. Now you don't have to use all of them. I'm just quickly adding them. And what you can do, you can drag them in. And you can distort the design. Now, I'm alternating. So I'm just going for missing one or two. Just keeping one pin just to hold it in there. Hold it in that position. And you can really distort the design all kinds of ways using this approach. And then click apply. Of course, I could create loads of different designs. I'm just going to go with that. But also another thing I love to do is go to filters and repeat deform. Because sometimes you can apply it again and it squeezes in different ways. Not always. Sometimes it might look terrible when you apply deform again. But now once you've done that, what you can do, go to the layers panel. It's just a layer. And you can add effects. So I'm just going to go here. Effects, with that selected, click there. And you've got a load of options. Now some work well, some don't. I'm going to go with 3D. So 3D, and you can push up the radius. And as you do that, you can see the result of the 3D effect. And you can modify the profile. Personally, I always find it doesn't look great if you do that, unless you use the soften. It's because you can click here and just apply, and you get this, which I don't particularly want. So I'm just going to remove that profile. I'm just going to keep this nice blurry effect. But you can modify direction, and you can see as you do that, get achieve other results. And I'm going to close. So once done that, you've got this pixel layer with this effect. Well, you can duplicate this design. You can duplicate it using the linked duplicate. And that's a very useful. Weirdly, it is one that doesn't have a shortcut. I do not know why. Nor does it work well, unfortunately, with power transforms. I would love to see that feature. I don't know why it doesn't, but it doesn't. So duplicate linked. And that will create an exact copy of that design. But you can resize it. You can move it around. So you can reposition it. And I'm just going to resize just slightly. Just a bit smaller. And also I'm just going to rotate it. So just rotate. So now you can see that design it's just moved at a certain angle, just and a bit smaller. Again, if there was power transforms, it would be a lot easier. But you can also see over here, linked. And you can go to layer, and again, duplicate linked. Again, you could set up a shortcut. Makes it easier, of course. Resize again, reposition it, and rotate. Just slightly, just smaller, but you can see the result of that just 
just turning around. And you can create 20 or 30 of these. Obviously, I'm not going to do that for the purposes of this video. But duplicate linked. And again, that one smaller and resize it, rotate it, all those sort of things. You don't have to do that. You can just rotate it or just resize it. Up to you. And you can create different, just to see what you, that's it. So once you've got that, you can group them if you want. So you can go select all of these, right click, and you can group. And then you can move it around easily. Also, if you go up here, auto select, and go for groups. So you can just move the group around. So just reposition it. Because you might want it sort of in the center. Because sometimes some of the tools you use, you might find they get cut off at the edge. But now what you can do, is you can apply another thing. You can go for deform again. And that deform effect, but you can also go for another one that's really useful. Once you've created this design, filters distort and mirror. And now you can see you've got this mirror effect. Now, straight away, this has all been turned into a pixel layer, which I didn't want. So what you need to do is go there. Not much good clicking the group. That's what happens. Apply the filter, as soon as you do that, it just turns into a pixel. To keep it duplicate linked, you need to select the actual layer that's got the duplicate linked. Slightly odd feature, but that's the way it works. So now that's selected. Now I can go to filter, distort, and mirror. And now you can see you get this lovely option here for two, three, and you can see it's just changed it, but you can move the origin point. So you can re, now I could push it further up, but unfortunately when you're recording the tutorial, that actually the, suddenly it starts to have a bit of an impact on your machine. And you can see as you move the origin point, you can see you can create literally thousands of different color combinations of those there just trailing off. And you can move the origin point in all kinds of positions. Also you can go here, input, Go to the input, and you can move it around. Now it's constrained, but if you hold down the alter option key on the keyboard, you can actually move it around and it will not be constrained. Obviously you can enter a value as well. Just simply enter a value. Now a certain range, you won't see anything, but you can come back and you can see there, you've got that design. And again, you can continue to move it around and reposition it and literally create infinite amount of designs. And you can always, of course, once you've applied it, you can always go apply a deform. So you've got this, still linked. So filters, doesn't have to end. Just go to filters and deform. Just drag that over there and add. Now, unfortunately, unless you know exactly which one you're applying to, you might suddenly find, so yeah, you just drag there and that's all dragged out. Now, at this point, the layer effects, all still applied. They're all still linked. You can, if you want to, turn it all into a pixel layer by rasterizing it. But then the duplicate link, unfortunately, is lost. And you can stretch it out and you can see the result is trailing off in that direction or that direction. So it just smears all across the page. And you can do that and click apply. And of course, you can always then go back to apply mirror and so on.